Hey guys, today we're going to do is Magic Origins box, booster box worth buying? And the answer to this question is probably not. I'm going to buy a box, or maybe two, just so I have a box. I like to collect boxes and I like to open them, and definitely for this channel. But they are definitely not worth buying, and here's the reason. Yes, you have five Planeswalkers. Yes, you have enemy tap lands or enemy uh, pain lands. And yes, you have like some cool cards that are really nice reprints. Um, Goblin Pile Driver is kind of the mutable of the set, if you will, but way more expensive. It's going to be good. You have Mythic Angels. You have all these good cards in this set. Now you might ask yourself, then why would I choose not to buy this these cards? Well, um, it becomes very simple. And here's the here's the logic I'm employing. If you spend money on Magic Card now, you are spending it on you're you're probably spending it from hobby money, and you will need to spend less in the future, right? In the future, what's coming out? Well, first of all, in the past, Modern Masters 2015 has come out, and you can order it online for two hundred dollars a box if you're interested to know where two hundred dollars box shipped anywhere in the U.S. to you, USPS. No, UPS sh shipping, and I will tell you exactly where it is. Um, and it's, they have like unlimited boxes. $200 a box for Modern Masters 2015. Now, you might ask yourself, hey, MTG Lion, that's in the past. I already spent that money. Who cares? Battle for Zendikar is coming. Battle for Zendikar, if it's anything remotely like Zendikar, Zendikar, remember, it had those, I keep talking about it, but like, it's a money-making mechanic. As long as you didn't open that land packet, you're good. I mean, if you had that land packet right now, $30 is a reasonable price that people would pay for it. They might even pay $40 for it. You pay a fat pack of $30, and just the lands were worth $30. I mean, come on, think about that for a moment. Why wouldn't you continue to buy these like fat packs or boxes and stuff? This assumes, and here's the assumption I'm making, that... Full art lands will be in the next set. Will be in Battle of Zendikar. And that will assume that Fetch lands will also be in Battle of Zendikar. It's not the full art regular lands that make that made Zendikar so valuable as a set. It's the fact that you could get foil Fetch lands, and it's the fact that you can get foil full art lands, in particular islands. As additional value, additional value. Remember, Zendikar the first time came out had hidden treasures as well. So you're looking at a set that just oozed the money. Like it just oozed the money. Like no other set I've ever seen in the history of Magic. Because you open a, you open a booster pack, you're going to get foil, full art lands. You'll get your fetch lands. You'll get maybe uh, you have the opportunity to get foil fetch lands. You got Goblin Guide. You had. I mean, you look at the set and you just gotta say to yourself, wow, wowzers, like, that set was some, had insane long-term value. And uh, Step Links was actually my favorite, not Step, was it Step Links? Step Lion, I don't know, whatever it was, that's my favorite card in foil, like, I honestly tell you, I love that card in death. Um, you had just so many valuable cards, you had the five, five, uh, Fetch lands, the enemy fetch lands. Then you had the full art lands. And if that was the only two variables that every pack was exactly like Zendikar was guaranteed a full art land. And then, you know, every booster box is pretty much guaranteed two foil or at least one foil. Uh, I would just say, I would imagine two to four because it should be the same ratio as a regular, you know, when you're drafting it, you always see foil lands pop up all over the place. Uh, so I would assume it's the same. That foil land is additional value. It's just additional value. It doesn't cost anymore. Like it just helps the expected value of the set. And the five Zendikar land, something like a Goblin Guide, some Mythic Angels maybe, uh, Planeswalkers. We probably know that we're gonna see Nahari maybe. I hope we don't see Shorin again because I'm a little tired of seeing him everywhere. But Ugin might be back. I mean, a lot of different Planeswalkers. The Planeswalkers will add some value to it at Mythic. But again, the value of packs are not at Mythic. It's only at Rare because you're not guaranteed Mythics in the pack. But 
if you open a box, I mean, you open a case, you're guaranteed X amount of rares in that case for the most part. So Battle for Zendikar is where I would have put my money in. Um, I would be saving money for that, and I am going to start saving money by not buying so much Magic Origins. I love Magic Origins, don't get me wrong, it looks like a wonderful set, but I probably would buy more singles of it than boxes, um, and there's a lot of cards I want in Magic Origins, uh, but not necessarily um, over-battled for Zendikar, right? Bye, guys.